Amen. So we're here today out of love and compassion for Jesus, for you, and, and out of the love of Jesus Christ who gave his life for you. Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, a lot of you know this already, but I'm going to go over it again. Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, shed his very own precious, pure, holy blood for you, for your sins, so that you can be saved from your sin and saved from hell. John the Baptist spoke of Jesus Christ in John chapter 1, verse 29. If you're following along, get your Bible apps up. John chapter 1 and verse 29, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's good news. Menominee Falls, that's good news. Time to put down your beer and pick up a Bible. First Corinthians 6, 9 says that drunkards shall not inherit the kingdom of God. First Corinthians 6, 9 and 10, know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Neither adulterers or idolaters or fornicators or drunkards or thieves or revelers shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 11, this needs to be you. And such were some of you. I used to be a drunkard. I used to be a pothead. On my way to hell and Jesus set me free. Jesus set me free. He set me free from my iniquity. He set me free from my sin. He set me free from hell and the chains that were wrapped about me, dragging my soul to hell. He set me free. What's like a bird? What's that, sir? I said he set you free for the microphone. Oh, no. He said to cry aloud and spare not my voice. That's what I'm here to do today because I love you, sir. I don't want you to go to hell, sir. I want you to go to heaven. So, like I was saying, that he set me free. Once like a bird in prison I dwell. No freedom from my sorrow I fell. Then Jesus came. And listen to me, and glory to God, He set me free. He set me free, yeah, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus to see, and glory to God, He set me free. Goodbye to sin and things that confound. Not of this world shall ever turn me around. Daily I'm working and I'm praying to and glory to God. I'm going true. He set me free. Yes, yes he, he set, set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus to see, and glory to God, He set me free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He set me free, and He can set you free. You know, we live in the land of the free and the home of the brave, so they say. But it has become a land of murdering and homosexuality. Wickedness, wickedness, wickedness in the land. Thank you. We're not protesting. I'm not going to let you 
letter. I can show you the letter. If you want to see it, I'll take it on my phone. The letter covers our freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and freedom of assembly, which is what we're doing here in the public speaking. But there are ordinances in regards to assemblies. And you have to file and have a permit. Not, not for Otherwise, you need to keep moving. The Constitution. You cannot stay stationary. I'm going by the ordinances. Yeah, the Constitution the says. The Constitution says the First Amendment. Is Sir, our First I Amendment word? I, I understand what your First okay. Amendment word is. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, you don't have a permit to be here. You cannot stay stationary. Well, all those people disrupt, are stationary. disrupt the festivities. Are you going to tell so them? Please, sir. Tell the people stationary here to sir, move on to me. You're, I'm you're being just, as nice you're, as I can. Well, you're being, uh, you're being arbitrary right now. You're, and you're being. Uh, because what's the word I'm looking for? I have to look out for right. the village and things. We right. did not get a letter okay, well, stating that you were going to be here. You have not gotten a permit. I don't need a permit. I really want to. We have the first amendment. Permit. Here's the letter that I sent to your fine bill, which included you. And, you and I did it. not get it. I'm sorry that you didn't. I, I so, tried. I went by the website and the email on the website. That's all I had. I would have looked forward to so, talking to you ahead of time. I mean, it would have I'm, been more, it would have I'm been asking easier to you do. to please. Okay. Okay. And then based on which ordinance? I'll there's need that a, ordinance there's number. There's ordinances against an assembly if you don't have a I don't. I don't want to cause a scene. Well, I, and I don't want I don't to go. Want to, to. I don't want to get caught up in courts and law, which is what's going to happen. I just like you know, I don't want that. It's I'm, a beautiful day. Yes, it is. And as you know, we are here. We are celebrating freedom. Yeah, but where's the freedom if you're going to kick us off the streets here today? Because you don't have a permit to be out. Here, we don't sir. need a permit. I just told you the First Amendment, which is covered in this letter, that if you would take the time to read, ma'am. Yo, you can actually have that copy. It's yours to keep. Sir, there are ordinances in regards to having an assembly. You did not notify the village in time. I did. You do I not notified have a you permit. on Monday. The letter is dated Monday. I did not get the letter, I know. Sir. I, it's not my fault that you didn't get it. I went by the website. It's I did not notif my fault I notified that you don't have a permit. Everyone did on that letter. Did I don't you need register a, with the, the village? The permit is the First Amendment. Sir, the First Amendment, once again, I, I'll go over I, it again. Sir, first I know amendment. what the First Amendment is. Well, I don't think okay. you do. I do know what the First I don't think you do. Is. It's time for you to please move on. And move on where? You can't stay here stationary in this So if we walk spot. up and down then, we'll... No, you have to leave the event proper. Go outside of the event. We can put you on Main and Appleton or right over there. Okay? This is... But you can't... This is permitted for this event. Yes. Okay? It's not permitted for you to be here. So what's your okay. name, sir? Sergeant Burley. Sergeant Burley. Yes. Sergeant yeah, yeah, Burley yeah. and Chief. Chief yes. Thank you. Yes. So I want to go over the permit now. The permit is a non-exclusive permit. If it was an exclusive permit, there would be charging to get in. There would be ticket booths. Then yeah, we would be on the outside. But a non-exclusive permit welcomes all the public in, which is us, public, and therefore on a, on a public sidewalk in a public venue with a non-exclusive permit. I would I'd encourage you to look that up. It's a non-exclusive permit. I know it is. And we're not going to. We're asking you again to please leave So the you're not going to look at the law. You're not going to look at my letter. We don't have to, sir. You don't have to. We're asking okay, you, you are begging the You are begging the lawsuit. That's what I don't want to do, to do that. Then, then Could do you that. please just move outside to the outside of the venue? You will still be in a corner where people can hear you. Because I assume that is what you want. Yes. That's so probably, we are probably asking deal. you to please move from this location. Okay. Well, I encourage you to look at our letter, which I've given you to, for your copy, and keep that. I, I wish you would have gotten it ahead of time. Okay. I appreciate you to look it over and look over the non-exclusive permit that I just told you about, sir. Okay. And I would hope that you change your minds because you'll be more than likely contacted by a lawyer and civil lawsuits okay. and all these things. That I don't is want, your I don't prerogative, want that. sir. I that don't is want your that. prerogative. I don't want that. Please move to the outside of the venue if you are going to continue. Well, we're definitely going to continue. Then so outside the, the venue, outside. how you can see at the end of Appleton and Main where there are dump trucks. That's the end of the venue. The other end of the venue is down behind that stage. Okay. Move to either one of those locations, and you are fine. Okay. Now I just have to ask for clarification. We're going to comply in a moment here. If we don't leave, what will happen? Unless you cause a disturbance, nothing will happen. So if we stay in here with our signs and our megaphone, what's going to happen? 
You food. cannot be in here. We just told you what, that. What sir. will happen if we decide to and stay? We will have, we we will have to. We will ask you. Then we'll escort you. We'll if escort resist, you. Then it goes up from there. We don't so want I'm, that I'm just happen. looking for the whole. I have to ask for my legal purposes. I think we know. Well, no. We I, it has to be clarified. It has to be clarified from my lawyer. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. It has to be clarified from my lawyer that if I do not leave, you're going to ask me to leave, which you've already done. If I choose to stay, can you say you're going to escort me? Amy, if you refuse to leave, yes. And then if we still refuse to leave, then potentially you could be arrested, yes. Potentially. Yep. I just, I need to do it. I appreciate the work that you do. Blue Lives Matter, praise the Lord. Uh, Romans 13, I give you the honor and thanks for that. But you are dishonoring this country. I just let you know by trampling our First Amendment rights today that these people here, a lot of these people here, fought really hard for it. You know? it's, it's a lot of these people who have made a complaint about you being here. Yeah, and it's funny that they would complain about the freedom of speech and freedom of assembly that they provided for us. Sir, which we are very allowing thankful. you your freedom of speech. No, you're just not. We're allowing it down the road. You're not allowing it on this public corner right here, which is... Sir, are you, are you going to move for us? Yes, we are going to move. But I just you. want to make sure you Thank understand you. I everything. That. I, I totally sure. understand what you're saying. I you have know, your you voice your opinion. We understand. Uh, okay. It's not my opinion. It's the law of the land. The law of the land says, if you're videotaping, sir, we have the freedom of speech, the freedom of assembly, and the, the freedom of religion, and we are being denied that also. right here today, here and in America. I have the freedom to stand up for the military our department. Fought. The military has fought very hard. I, I support our police department, and they. Ask I do you to too. Leave. I do too. Sir, folks, we need to sign up. That's okay. Thank you. All right, we're going to move up the road, guys. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I, I was just wondering where else we're going You said um, all the way down on that end. Yes. Facebook friends, you see it? The police, they will not let us stay here. They're demanding that we leave. Breaking the constitutional rights. I was thinking the park, because that's like close enough to the middle. And that's the letter I sent to the city, so hopefully she's going to go with it. I think if we went into the park, the park's like right there with the river. I think if we went over near that side, I think we might be able to get closer. The only reason I was thinking up there is because it looked like there was more traffic coming from that way. We could try that too. We could just experiment too, just to see where we get the most traffic. Most traffic. Yeah. This, this is all around. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to be able to hold this and hold this at the same time. Alright. Let me hold this. Well, yeah, I know you. It's God, Facebook God. Live right now. Oh, this way? Thank you. Three thousand babies a day. The kids. The kids need to know they're going to grow up and have to make decisions. You guys are the selfish crew. I can't believe you're doing this. Selfish. You are all the pride, mister. Your pride's showing yourself. Your pride. No, you don't even want the gospel to be spread. That's how wicked you are, mister. Well, if we shake the dust up our feet and the wicked don't repent, the Lord will be harder at Judgment Day on this city. Children need to know the truth. 3,000 babies a day yeah. killed, brutally murdered. Okay, yeah, just move on. I don't think brutally that's really murdered. appropriate to have it at a family Yes, they are going to grow up and need to make choices. Yeah, you know, bless you. Right? Now he's going that way. Okay. 
to get right with your creator time to get right with the god who gave you breath in your lungs like i said he's the same god who will take your breath away one day one day it's coming called judgment day one day is coming called judgment day this is america folks welcome to america where we still have our freedom of speech if you don't like it go pound sand Go hang out with the Muslims for a while, sir. See what, how long you hold on to your head being an infidel You're an in a Muslim country. God bless you, sir. You are not a Christian. God bless you. you are not God Christian. bless you, sir, with a more Christian, space to repent. A Christian more space to repent. You, you, you need to repent, Jesus said. I have repented. You are not a Christian. Why do you hate the gospel so much? I don't hate the gospel. Yeah, you do. You are an That's atheist. what I'm preaching here today, the truth, no, the, the truth of Jesus Christ. You're preaching attention for the yourself. The Jesus of the Bible. You're full of shit. Who came and died on the cross for your sin. Look at that potty The wages mouth. of sin is death, potty the Bible mouth. says, okay, and the gift of God is eternal life. I know the chief of police talked to you. What did she say? Come here. Okay. But we have a bunch of kids that are doing I'll, I'll a talk recital. To her about it, sir. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to her again. Is it a kind of rude? So There's our children. Their, their, their children doing we'll a recital. Talk, we'll talk to her. We wanted to be down the road. We wanted to be away from you. You don't have a booth. Yeah, we don't need a booth. booth. Yes, we, have, you do. we have a booth. This is on a public side. Once again, like I was saying, we came here at the request of the chief of police. If you have an issue, you take it up with her. Time 
to get right with God. Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for your sin. See, there's the good news right there. You don't even like the good news. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus. You're going to interrupt them for what they've been practicing. That's not fair. That's not fair to them. What if you need the message? That's not what about yeah, that's what about the babies being murdered? Flipping us off, wicked woman. That's your Christianity. That's why we're here. We're here because of that. Yeah, pour out your booze, mister. You don't love Jesus, you love your belly. You love your booze more than you love God. It's not the for me. Yep. Yeah, my mic. Fine. Yep. Not our first rodeo. <laughs> Time to get right with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said that He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by Him. We come today to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, if my name be lifted up, I would draw all men unto me. Jesus Christ is drawing you in today. The question I have for you, will you heed to his drawing? The Bible says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves, the Bible says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and then He will lift you up. Humble yourselves. Turn from your sin. Turn from your pride. Turn from your drunkenness. Turn. Or burn. Hey, do you need a beer? Repent. No, yeah, if you give me a beer, I'll show you what to do with it. Pour it on the ground. Put down your beer and pick up a Bible. Time for you to turn. Jesus said in Luke chapter 13, verses 3 and 5, that unless ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Time to get right with God. We're here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ today, and Him and Him alone. Time to get right with God. Time to get right with Jesus Christ. Where is the respect for the unborn babies being ripped from the womb today? 3,000 to 4,000 babies will be slaughtered in this country. Slaughtered! Slaughtered! God hates your beer drinking, sir. God despises your beer drinking, by the way. He doesn't bless it. The Bible says that drunkards shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, the Bible says. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, the Bible says. We're here to preach the Bible. I came from the Bible Belt to you Wisconsinites here in Menominee Falls to give you a Bible Belting here this morning. You know, down in the Bible Belt where I live, most people don't even know what the Bible says. The Bible says to repent. The Bible says to turn from your sin and turn to Jesus Christ before it is too late. Because there's a day coming where it will be everlasting too late. That's what the Bible says. Appointed to die and appointed to judge. Time to get right with Jesus Christ before it is too late. Because there's a day coming called Judgment Day. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time of salvation. 
Tomorrow could be too late. Especially for you silverhead people. Tomorrow could be too late. That's why the Bible says, now is the time. See, God doesn't want you to go to hell. He doesn't want to put you there. But He will. The Bible says, in Psalm 711, that God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. Psalm 711, each and every day you continue in your sin, each and every day you continue in your wickedness, you are under God's anger and wrath. Anger and wrath. So we want you to have mercy. The Bible says that mercy rejoiceth against judgment, but not if you continue in your sin. Sin, sin, sin leads to hell, hell, hell. Drunkenness leads to hell. Mocking after God leads to hell. But we don't want you to go to hell. We don't want you to go to that place because once you're there, there's no way out. There's no exit in hell. Jesus talked about hell a lot. Jesus talked about hell more than he did love. We're here to tell you about the Jesus of the Bible. You want to wait to see what's going to happen. I'm up to the to wait. It's up to you. I can go a little longer, but I just don't want to. I don't want everybody to get a chance to preach today. So. Okay, you leave an early. So go. I'll go a little longer. So that was how it's saying. There's a day coming called Judgment Day. Most people are not ready. Jesus said that most people will go to hell. That's right, Jesus. The Jesus of the Bible. Not the Jesus of your own imagination. The Jesus of the Bible said, Wide is the road, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. But straight and narrow is the way that leads to everlasting life. And only a few will find it. Only a few will enter God's kingdom. Only a few will get in. Is that you? If you hate the preaching of the gospel, you're on your way to hell, and you need to repent. It looks like your helicopter. Man, <laughs> if you hate this preaching today, there's a good chance that you're headed to hell. On the highway to hell, where there's no stop signs or speed limits. You know, the highway to hell is paved with sinners on their way to hell. Don't go to hell, sinners. Don't do it. No sin is worth going to hell for. No sin is worth going to hell for. That's why we came here today. To plead with you to get right with the God who created you. The God of the Bible. Jesus Christ is coming back in flaming fire to bring vengeance upon those that know not God, nor keep His commandments, nor obey the gospel. He's coming back to destroy the wicked. He's coming back to destroy baby murderers. He's coming back to destroy LGBTQ+. On Judgment Day, he's going to destroy it. He's going to destroy this wicked country. 
this wicked country who once had a, a Bible as a standard. Time to get back to that standard. Time to get back to the Bible. Bring the Bible back in the schools and maybe the guns will go away. Banning the guns is not the answer. Banning the sin is. The Bible says that Jesus loves righteousness and hates sin. Now some of you here today may not understand what sin is. So I'm going to break it down real nice and simple for you here today. I'll break it down for you. Sin is a crime against God. If you break man's law, you go to jail. If you break God's law, you go to hell for all eternity. And the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, we all deserve His justice called hell fire. The good news is, you don't have to get what you deserve. That's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the good news. The good news is you can be set free from your sin. The good news, you don't have to go to hell for your sin. Because Jesus made a way. He made a way for you and me to enter into eternity. Praise the Lord. Amen. Did you bring your bullhorn? You did? Why don't you go ahead and get it out, and that way we won't kill one, one bullhorn. Sister, can you hold that banner for him, please? Jacob, put your... Oh, we're not, we're not going to go in. I'm hoping that this will irritate them enough to... See, we will to set up, we will set up a great state. I told them to go here. They said, why don't you go just turn our... Cooperation was that we were where we were. We were away from the stage. That's cooperation. They just don't. They didn't appreciate. Um. Uh oh. Well. the wickedness of their hearts because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth will speak well it shows that wicked heart that wicked imagination of that person we're here to plead with you today we're here to compel you to come to know this Jesus Christ that we know that can set you free of your sins not that you will continue in your sins, God forbid, Paul said. We're here to give you the oracles of God. To speak the truth. Because Jesus said, thy word is truth. The truth will set you free. You'll be free indeed. Not freedom to sin against God. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. At 1 John 3, 8, 
Again, so you This is what first John 3 8 says. Says He who sins is of the devil. Walk in the spirit, that way you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. I challenge you, any other one of you, you've got you've got phones, you've got these smartphones. Well punch in these Bible verses that we're speaking and see if they're not there. I challenge you. Punch in first John 3 8. See what it says. He who sins is of the devil. That's what it said. We're coming, we're bringing you the word. Jesus compelled us to come out and speak to you the, the pure truth, the word of God. Yeah, you're going to bring a speaker out here to drown us out. Okay, well, we can just move, that's fine. We can move to the other side of the street. That is fine. We have this happen all the time. This isn't the first time. This is not our first time. So you know, you come over here and you cuss us at, this filthy mouth cusser here, comes over here and says, well yeah, the, the children, the children, what are they going to think of this? What are you going to think of this filthy mouth here? You're going to be saying the f bombs and all this stuff. Officer? Yes sir, how may I help you? That is true, because constitutional rights gives us the freedom of speech that we can be heard.
listen to the message found in the gospel of Christ. They won't open up their Bibles. They won't read their Bibles. They won't ask Jesus for the Holy Ghost to lead them, guide them into all truth. Because the Holy Ghost will lead you. The Holy Ghost will guide you into all truth. Do you want to know this truth? Get your Bible out. Ask Jesus. Ask Jesus to throw, show you through the Holy Ghost the truth in the Word of God. Because He will. Want to be like little children, Jesus said. Yes, want to be like little children. Because they have no pride. We would be in here in the they had no pride. That pride is what's eating up people today. Because they think they know who God is. They want to make Jesus Christ into a, a sinful man. You're not going to make Jesus into a sinful man. He came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to destroy sin. He doesn't want you to continue in your sins. He wants you to live for Him and Him only. Do you know that the Bible says that God's name is jealous? He's jealous for you. He's jealous for your soul. He wants you to come to Him and live for Him because He is jealous for you. If you love Him, you would keep His commandments, is what He says. Do you say that you love Jesus Christ? If you do, do you keep His commandments? Because the next verse says, If you say that you love Him, you keep not His commandments, you're a liar, and the truth isn't in you. We're here, we're going through many, many, scriptures in the Bible. And like I said to this man before, test us. Test the words that we are speaking. See if they're not in the Bible. Because I can assure you, we're not giving your own thought. We're coming and we're compelled by the Holy, the Holy Ghost to give you the eternal words of truth. Because they're eternal. Man's thoughts aren't eternal, but God's Word is eternal. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. Look it up. Look it up. Isaiah 40, verse 8. says these words. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the Word of God, it does what? It lasts forever. Because it's eternal. God's words are eternal. If you want to live eternal life, get out your Bible. Love the Word of God. Because that's what brings you eternal life. It's a road map. It's a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Amen. It is. The commandments of God are light unto our feet. Lamp unto our feet and light unto our path. Yes. Amen. We need that light for that path. Because we need to go down the straight path. Because Jesus said, wide is the gate. Wide is the gate. Broad is the path that leads to where? Well, it leads to hell is where it leads. It leads to destruction is what the Bible says. Hell. Wide is the path. Or wide is the gate. Broad is the path that leads to destruction. And Jesus said, many will follow that way. Many. Many will follow that way. But he said, straight is the gate. And narrow is 
a path that leads to life. And he said, Fairly few be that find it. Fairly few people are on that narrow path. Jesus said, Not very many people are going to end up in heaven. That's what he spoke. And yet we have people out there that says, Oh, say this little prayer after me, and you're going to go to heaven. No, that's not the case. It says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus rose from the dead, and you'll be saved. So there's a two part there. It's not that easy. People want to bring that easy believism, and that's not the truth. The truth is, straight is the gate. Narrow is the path. And that's the truth. It's time to get right with the God of the Bible. It's time to serve Jesus Christ and God for sin. So it's time to pour out your booze and pick up your Bible. You it's time to walk down that narrow path. It's time that you get right with Jesus. Don't be caught in your sin. Jesus said, I'm coming. He said he's going to come like a thief in the night. And you're not going to be ready. Are you ready for Jesus to come? You're in your sins. You're living a lie. Because you are that foolish virgin found in the Bible. The wise virgins came. They came, kept their oil up in their faces. They circumcised their hearts. They cut off that wick. And they were prepared for the Master to come, Jesus Christ. They were ready for Jesus. And the foolish virgins weren't. They left the Spirit because they lived in their sin. They lived in their sin. They rebelled against God. They didn't repent. They stay right with Jesus. They want to live a life that they want to live, that prideful life. Repent means to turn away. Repent means to change your direction. If you're living in sin, you're a drunkard, you're a homo, you're an adulterer, you're a fornicator, living in sin outside of marriage, sex outside of marriage, you're an idolater, you're going to end up in hell. Jesus can set you free of all that. He can set you free of all your sin. He can make you righteous and holy in Christ Jesus. We're not shouting. You are shouting. We're just coming, bring in the word of God. You're trying to play music over here. If I was shouting, I'd do that. You're an asshole. I'm not shouting. You need to stop being so wicked, woman, and flipping the middle finger in front of these kids. You're supposed to be the example, you wicked woman. You're to be the example for these young children. You're a bad grandma, bad mommy.
bad example. You are a bad example to children. I sure hope you're not a school teacher. They were wicked, and they needed the Savior, Jesus Christ. They were wicked in their imaginations. They were wicked before God. You need to be righteous. You need to be holy before God. Because without holiness, you won't see God. There's no seeing God if you're not holy. The Bible says, be Jesus spoke these words. Be ye holy. Which loud Is that what he said, Jesus? Be ye holy. That's what followed heaven's holy. That's what he said. Listen. And yet, Listen. there's people that there's say children. you don't have to be holy. There's you don't have to be righteous. You yeah, have to be uh, righteous. You see this? Jesus. Do you see this? You are righteous. You are righteous. Right with Jesus. 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 Give up your own sin nature. That old sin nature, it stinks anyway. That old sin nature, it reeks. You know what it reeks of? Death! The wages of sin is death. The forgiveness of God is eternal life through who? Christ Jesus. Jesus! He loves the little children. Yes, he does. Because we're to be like little children. No pride. The pride of man is an abomination to God. You need to be humble before God. You should be humble before us. Women, you should submit to your husband. Feminism in America is destroying America. Women are prideful. They need to submit to their husbands. Husbands, you need to be the man to your wife. You need to be the leader of your household. You need to be the priest that God has called you to be. Because God is going to judge you according. You want to be the leader of your household? And why are you to submit to your husband? You let them do the leading, not you. That's what's wrong with America today. Feminism destroying America. Jesus said that the head, well, Paul said, that the head of man is Jesus Christ. The head of a woman is man. You get that, women? You understand that, young women? Your husband's to be the leader. Man, you're not to beat up on your husband, your wives. You to love your wives as Jesus loved the church. I love my wife here as Jesus loved the church. I don't beat up on my wife. Do we have? Uh, arguments? Do we have uh, disagreements? Of course we do. But I don't beat up on my wife. It's time to get in the right order that's found in the scripture. We need to be in the right order. God is a God of order, not disorder. That's what's wrong with America today. They wanted a woman to be president. I don't want no woman to become a president. Our leader is to be a man. Praise God, Donald Trump is the president. Not Hillary Clinton that kills young babies. Thank God we have a man. However, Trump is a wicked man. He needs to save your Jesus Christ. 
He needs to come to know Jesus. He would know the right biblical order too. We do. We know the right biblical order. We know how to raise our children. Not raising them up in this world that's dying. Not raising up our children in this, these wicked schools. We homeschool our children. We're not going to let the devil raise our children. Because everything's part of the school that's anti-God. Schools are wicked. I used to be a public school teacher. And the schools are wicked. They're turning our children away from God. Why would you want your children to go and be sucked right in to this world, you people that profess Christ? You profess Christ. Raise your children knowing Jesus Christ. You profess Christ. Don't let your children be sucked into this public school system to where they turn anti-God. You know, the, the whole truth of the matter is, are you obedient to God? So, the Lord, you know, when I first came to him, I wasn't raised in church, I didn't know nothing about God. I was 26 years old, I was on cocaine, I was in a pit. And I said, if you're God, you show me. Show me. And I will listen to you. I didn't know anything. I didn't know if Jesus died on the cross. I didn't know nothing I was raised I just know over at Waukesha, at least. I don't know if it's similar ordinance. So when I read the Bible and it says, if you I, love him, you obey him. So I'm just asking well, the effectiveness. I'm getting to the point. If you love Jesus, you obey him. It doesn't matter what I think or what the outcome is. I am obeying Jesus Christ. That's all I know. Now, on the other hand, there are many, many people who come to the Lord through street ministry, through tracts. Um, we do. I think the Holy Spirit does His work in, in His work in His way. Yeah, but you know, Jude said some say with compassion. Like sometimes I go to stores and just hand out tracts. And talk. I just ask them to pray. Then He said, "Save." Us.
said, go to New York and start a ministry in the middle of the game. And he said, how am I going to tell my wife? And when he talked to her, the Lord had already spoke, and they moved, and he had a powerful ministry up there. Uh, Nikki Cruz is the was a gangs uh, leader, I have to, and he's converted. I have to find my okay, group. Okay, sorry. <laughs> God bless you. Man. All right. I can go talk to him about what you guys are saying. Yep. I don't have the authority to put you one place or another, yep. but I'll see if there's a matter of one on another spot. If there's not a legal prohibition to that, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to.
The God of the Bible is more holy than what Matt Chandler teaches him to be. The God of the Bible can't look upon sin without anger in his heart. Without anger towards those that he created to serve him. Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day. God has prepared his throne for judgment. He shall judge the world in righteousness and shall govern the nations in justice. The God of the Bible is a merciful God because you being alive in your sin right now is mercy. But God has to be just as well. And if you fail to repent, if you do not fear your Creator and turn from your wicked ways, God will have to judge you according to what you've done. That's what the Bible says. Not many churches will teach you that. We're here today to tell you what the Bible says. Amen. That God will judge the wicked. Amen. God will not give you a hug. God will not say, I love you. God will say, you fornicated, you committed adultery, you committed homosexuality, you commit abortion, the murder of millions of unborn children. Depart from me, workers of sin. I never do you. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life. The way Sin will not get you a pass with God. God the Bible hates your sin. God the Bible will throw you into hell and fire. Continue living in sin. Word of God says that Jesus Christ can cleanse you from your sins. Jesus Christ can redeem your soul and give you back the life that the devil stole from you. The Bible says in John 10.10, 10, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The devil will kill, steal, and destroy by telling you that abortion is okay, and then after you commit that abortion, he'll kill you with blood guilt. He'll destroy your life with blood guilt for that child that you just murdered. The devil will try to lie, steal, and destroy your life by telling you that being a homosexual is all right. And then after you commit homosexuality, believe in the devil's lie, he'll destroy you by the fact that you get AIDS by the fact that you get gonorrhea, by the fact that you get syphilis. That's the wages of homosexuality. Back off. I'm speaking to you. I'm not, I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you. You, you got our mic. You can talk to me. You can talk to me. See these children? You're keep ruining their recital. Keep you see the children you, on that you're, you're they ruining never got their a chance recital. To, uh, yeah, they but never got a chance to play. What do you party. think? All these families. What do you think they're gonna think? I that mean, God's gonna judge them. No, no, they're gonna think that you guys are idiots. And I mean, well, the you're, Bible you're, says that you're an God idiot. God is gonna to, uh, judge you. Reject him. You know, we can talk about the God, God is going to judge you. You're not going to stop you're, the you're preaching of Jesus Christ, Christ today. You know how long these kids work for to learn this? My Jesus student, he spent six months learning to play the Star Spangled Banner. Six months to learn to play the Star Spangled Banner. We were, kid, we were told to come back here by the cops. This kid was adopted. Did you hear me? We were told to come back here by the cops. Time to be a sin-hating God lover.
The devil lied to Van Halen when he said that you can't, you can't go to hell. But Van Halen was destroyed by the devil's influence and went to hellfire. And all you who listen to that wicked devil will also perish in the lake of fire. Bible says to put no wicked thing before your eyes. Because then you get filled with that evil influence. And then you believe the devil's lies that you can't be saved. That God would not want you. The God of the Bible does want you to repent. The God of the Bible wants you to stop destroying your life through homosexuality and the diseases that come with it. The, de the God of the Bible doesn't want you to believe the devil's lies that will destroy your life by making you believe that abortion is safe. Abortion isn't safe. That's a murdered unborn child. And the mother and father of that child is being destroyed by the blood guilt of their unborn child. The devil wants to destroy your life, but the God of the Bible wants to give you life. The God of the Bible wants to deliver you from a destructive lifestyle of stealing, drunkenness, drugs, fornication, porn watching, homosexuality, and abortion. But the devil wants to destroy you. The devil wants you to go to hell and suffer for all of eternity by lying to you, by saying that abortion is okay, that homosexuality is safe, and then he'll destroy you through the diseases. We're here today to show love to our neighbor by warning you that getting drunk can destroy your life, that committing fornication can destroy your life, that committing homosexuality can destroy your life. The Bible says to get right with him, Stop your sin, stop destroying your life. Your body is a temple to God that you are to care for. Your body is was made to serve God, not to serve the devil. God of the Bible is keeping track of all that is being done. The God of the Bible records all your deeds, all the evil music that you listen to and that you love. The God of the Bible records the amount of beers you guzzle, the amount of alcohol you guzzle. You may enjoy